uh, a curve that's been attracting a lot of attention. People talking about it on social media. What's it all about? Doctors say all these cancellations are a way to flatten the curve. Social isolation is to try to bend that curve. And to flatten the curve. Flattening the curve has been a phrase constantly bumbling throughout my eardrums this past couple weeks and has become somewhat of a buzzword. But what is this curve and what does it mean to flatten it? Let's discuss. Just in case you're watching years and years into the future, we're in the midst of the coronavirus. Yep, that little pandemic that kicked off the 20s in style. A pandemic inherently isn't a typical situation a person finds themselves in. As a matter defined by extremity, and sometimes that can prompt some understandable fear from the general public. The coronavirus, specifically the strain COVID-19, is zoonotic, which means it can be transmitted between animals and humans. There are three main symptoms of the disorder, being fever, cough, and a shortness of breath. Importantly, the virus may live within the body for 2-14 to 14 days with no actual symptoms shown. But back to that little curve we were talking about earlier. This curve, actually. This graphic published by the University of Michigan has become an extreme talking point during this time. And this line, this one right here, is the main point of this graph, the surge capacity. Surge capacity is the ability for a hospital or a healthcare system to handle a high influx of individuals needing care due to a certain event happening. These events could be any disaster, such as an earthquake, a heat wave, or even a pandemic like the one we find ourselves in. When this line is crossed, the healthcare system starts to break down. So how do we go from this curve to this one? It's never that many people will contract the COVID-19 virus, though the speed in which people contract the virus is variable. So if people are to protect themselves and delay the sometimes inevitable illness, the overall healthcare system should be better suited to handle COVID cases as the curve slowly but surely flattens under the line. So, if the only way to help our healthcare system is to protect ourselves, how are we going to do that? Mostly things you already should have been doing and some extra precautions. One, wash your hands. It's super simple, but so, so necessary. You can only be infected by the coronavirus if it enters your body. This means if it's on your hands, you aren't necessarily infected yet. So proper hand wash can do the trick before you rub your eyes or some other maneuver. Hand washing is cheap and effective making it so, so necessary to flatten the curve. Though hand sanitizer has its benefits, nine out of 10 times, stick to hand washing as it'll be much more effective. Two, social distancing has become somewhat of a buzzword, a lot like flattening the curve during this pandemic, but it has its merits. For example, an individual in South Korea dubbed patient 31 came in contact with over 1,000 people will be infected with the coronavirus. This, with just a bit of social distancing, would remove the cluster that then resulted from that individual. Keep your human contact to a minimum, they'll still keep you socially sane. 3. Do as the Brits do and keep calm. Not only will level head keep yourself rational in your decision making, it can have real important medical and societal effects. Medically, stress can negatively impact your immune system, making your body much more susceptible to all kinds of illness. So, in worrying about fixing the issue, you may be making it worse. A real catch-22 of sorts. Societally, keeping calm and rational will prevent you from doing dumb things like buying the store's entire stock of toilet paper. Please don't do this. You aren't the only one going through this pandemic. I also think it's important to know that even if you aren't part of an at-risk group like the immunocompromised or the elderly, that you still take this virus seriously. Uh, while you may not be killed by it, you could easily carry it and then give it to someone who will be actually easily hurt by it. So it's still important for someone who isn't part of those groups to take precautions when it comes to this virus. So to review, one, wash your hands, two, keep your distance, and three, stay cool, calm, and collected. With all these steps being taken into consideration, you too can help flatten the curve, aiding in the stabilization of our healthcare system. Are you sure about that? Um, yeah, but if you aren't convinced on the legitimacy of the curve, I guess a little history lesson is in order. It's 1918, influenza is starting to sweep the nation, and two American cities, Philadelphia and St. Louis, have some decisions to make. Philadelphia had a parade and went on with it, while St. Louis banned all gatherings of over 20 individuals. Philadelphia was ravaged by the illness, 
having all their hospitals filled to capacity a short while later. St. Louis had half of the per capita death rate of Philadelphia. While there wasn't a huge difference in how many people got affected between the two cities, St. Louis banning the gathering over 20 individuals flattened the curve and helped their healthcare system actually handle people when they were sick. They flattened the curve and the medical systems worked themselves out. While flattening the curve may have become a bit of an empty phrase by its incessant repetition, it holds a lot of value. Currently, we don't have a vaccine for coronavirus. We don't have a cure-all. All we have is our collective action, and only in a collective effort can we minimize damage. And one final note. Wash your hands.